Welcome back party people. Today we're counting nine places you can beat the heat and be lazy in the Appalachian Mountains. This is the Nantahala edition. Number one on our list is Amon's Branch. Amon's Branch is located in the Nantahala National Forest, not too far from Highlands, North Carolina. The campground at Amon's Branch consists of four no-fee sites for boondockers and dry campers alike. And get this, the temperature at Amon's Branch is typically about 20 degrees cooler than surrounding areas just miles away. If you're feeling adventurous, you can hike out the Ellicott's Rock Wilderness Area. Ellicott's Rock, oh, you know what that is? The intersection of North Carolina, Georgia, and South Carolina. But let's call a spade a spade. I did say lazy. Not too far from Amon's Branch Campground, straddling the Tatuga River is this old cool iron bridge. As you drive across the old iron bridge, you may catch a glimpse of the kayakers. The Tatuga River is one of the Southeast's premier whitewater destinations. Here you can stop and take in the beauty of this free flowing river or take a dip in its cool waters. Number two on the list is Boondockin' Amon's Branch. Now, if the idea of camping with other campers at the Amon the Branch thing. campground is unsettling to you, you'll be pleased to know there are several other individual boondocking sites along Bullpen Road. Here, you can relax by a campfire and just enjoy nature. Now, don't forget your bug spray and don't forget your firewood either. Nantahala National Forest is a temperate rainforest and the second wettest region in the United States after the Pacific Northwest. And did I mention the temperature here is usually about 20 degrees cooler than surrounding areas just miles away. Even in the dog days of summer when it was 95 degrees back home, we found it to average around 75 degrees Fahrenheit during the day with low 60s at night. Number three on the list is Wahala State Fish Hatchery located in Mountain Rest, South Carolina. This particular fish hatchery is open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. Where are you at? Fish hatchery. Fish hatchery, yeah. Wahala. Fish hatchery. Now remember that old iron bridge that crossed the Chattooga River? Well, this is the east fork of the Chattooga River. It runs directly adjacent the fish hatchery. This fish hatchery produces about 150,000 pounds of rainbow, brown, and brook trout to stock local mountain streams and lakes. Time to release. Fishing is permitted just adjacent to the fish hatchery. Number four on the list is beautiful Lake Jokasi. Driving down the Oscar Wigington Memorial Highway gives you this overlook view of the upper part of Lake Jokasi, Bad Creek. And once you enter the cool waters of Lake Jokasi, grab your float, your kayak, or even some scuba diving or snorkeling gear. You'll be greeted with some of the clearest waters around. Jokasi actually means place of the lost ones in Cherokee. Mountain streams and rivers that run through Jokasi gorges dump directly into Lake Jokasi as waterfalls. The only catch is they're accessible by boat only. The day we arrived it was overcast and a bit cloudy, but it didn't stop us from getting out on the lake and enjoying the water. 
So if you're feeling the heat, there's no better way to cool off. We chose to access the lake from Devil's Fork State Park, rent kayaks, and stand up paddle boards, and also take a boat tour of the lake. Babe, oh, yes, open what did these five things say that we should do? Lake Jokasi is actually a man-made lake. It was created when Duke Energy built a dam in 1973. So what lies beneath Lake Jokasi? Well, towns and villages from years ago, as well as the Mount Carmel Cemetery made popular by the movie Deliverance. Number five on our list is Devil's Fork State Park. This time we chose to break away from boondocking and get a campsite at Devil's Fork State Park. We were in site number 47. We had electricity as well as water hookups. We found there was a good amount of shade at the campsites that were available and uh, ours was no different. We strung our hammock across the trees there and enjoyed our evening. Yeah, the restrooms are like right there. Let's go see. Probably one of the nicest bathhouses that I have seen. Air conditioned and plenty of room in the showers, ample sitting room, and spots to hang your towels and clothes. After enjoying a delicious dinner, there's always a pesky tree rat, I meant, I meant squirrel, searching for leftovers. A walkway connects the campsite to the public area. Way better than Card Lake. Trout, shad, all kinds of sunfish, crappie, bass. Who goes there? Pick a fool! Number six on our list is a visit to Upper Whitewater Falls. The observation deck is just a quick hike, then a paved walkway. We're at uh, Upper Whitewater Falls, and we're just going to walk to the observation deck. As you get closer, you can hear the rushing water of the falls, but don't forget to take in some of the views on the way. Want to take a guess at what lake that is? That's right, that's Lake Jocasa. Further up the trail, you come upon the first viewpoint. Magnificent waterfall here. White Water Falls is known to be the highest waterfall east of the Rockies. I think it goes toward the base. Now don't use up all your oohs and ahs at the first observation point. Head down the wooden stairs to the next observation deck and be prepared to be wowed once again. Seven on our list is the quaint town of Highlands, North Carolina. There's a church. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Risk the beast. After all, we are talking about escaping the heat. Highlands is located at 4,118 feet above sea level, having an average daily high temperature in the dog days of summer of just 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Highlands is a unique town, boasting a very active cultural art scene. Statues at Corey James's art gallery is sure to draw some attention. A quick stroll down Main Street and you'll understand why Highlands is often referred to as the Aspen of the East. 
Here you'll find boutiques, restaurants, inns, and a whole lot of churches for such a small town. Just west of town on Highway 64, or as the locals call it, the Franklin Highway, you'll find the Lake Sequoia Dam Falls. Depending on the water levels here, you can scramble out on the rocks at the bottom and get a glimpse of other waterfalls downstream. Lake Sequoia is the primary drinking water source for the town of Highlands. Lake Sequoia was created by damming the headwaters of the Coolasaja River. We'll see more of the Coolasaja River in the remaining video. on our list is the ever popular Bridal Veil Falls. Not to be confused with the other Bridal Veil Falls in North Carolina in the DuPont Forest or the Bridal Veil Falls at Niagara Falls. This is a popular falls because it's just roadside and at one point you were able to drive behind the falls but uh, it's fell in disrepair and the road is closed now. Nonetheless, a view from behind the falls, I can see why perhaps it was named Bridal Veil. Come back during the winter and see ice form at the base. Number nine on our list and our final spot is Dry Falls, located just down the road from Bridalville Falls. Just like Bridalville Falls, Dry Falls is located directly beside Highway 64. It does require just a little bit more effort, but the views are well worth it. Head down the walkway and you can stand behind the falls and feel the cool mist of the water. Did I mention this video was all about beating the heat? Dry Falls is also sometimes referred to as Upper Kulasaja Falls. So how did it get the name Dry Falls? Well, if the water flow is relatively low as you walk behind the falls, you'll remain relatively dry. Hence the name Dry Falls. Dry Falls stretches across the Coolasaja River Gorge. The Coolasaja River dumps to the Tennessee River near Franklin, North Carolina. That'll wrap this video up. Hope you enjoyed nine places to beat the heat and be lazy in the Appalachian Mountains. Not the holiday edition. Until next time, just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.